Good morning, everybody. So you remember in all my reviews, I always tell you, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six seconds. Or when I shoot, and I tell you, hmm, you feel it, there's a little vibration or there's a hand shock. The thing is, that's my subjective feeling and you don't know how this feels, what it feels, and some people ask if there is a way that you can measure it kind of scientifically that you see what is going on. What I come up with, you know, our tiller stock here, where we usually have our draw weight and stuff like this. And you remember this small item, the Mantis X8 for archery. Um, this is a measuring device more for the Fita compound archers. You have it mounted on your bow and then you see the whole thing from when you raise the bow, when you point, how you hold it still and after release what the bow is doing. And I thought maybe we could use this one mounted somewhere on this tiller stock. Like so. Mount the bow tight, obviously. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And this is in, at the moment my critical thing because the bows are so different. And they are really not, sometimes not so easy to tighten. Like this one. As you see, the thing is disappearing. But I will find a solution for that one. I need to show you how far I am right now in my thinking. So we tighten the bow, that it can't escape in any direction. So see that? And then this is what I saw in a video of Kyodo. Somebody sent to me, they simply had the ball like this. They were plucking the string 10 centimeters let it go and then they had a measuring device and it showed them vibration and all this stuff so now oops i didn't tighten you properly so we have the mantis we turn it on and we have the mantis app somewhere we have it here come on train so now we need to connect i guess where are we connected I don't know, we will see. So we start, they shall start. And what I have that you don't interfere too much with the string. Then he got me his uh, release. With this one, we will pull the string and then we see here what will happen. So we press here, start. We are ready, plug the string in. And then I pull down 10 centimeters. I see where it is, it's exactly here. Then I let go. So, and now it's interesting what you see. Uh, you see red is the release and this orange color is then after the release. But I show you in a second. I shoot three times this bow. That we have some kind of maybe pattern we will see or not. Let's see what's going on now. Don't know if it measured already. And you need to give it time because one cycle is always 15 seconds. So one thing, if it works, maybe Mantis would be willing to adjust the app for our purpose. That would be great. Let's try again. That was the second shot. And that's the third shot. So now we have three shots here. Now we can stop the session. And now you see, first of all, here a lot of scribble. So the red one would be the moment of release. So when you zoom out here a little, and you see the motion, the bow head in the release. So it's a quite big motion. And here on the corner, I will show you later on, you see the red bar. This is, so to say, the hand shock. The red one here is the red one here. And it feels almost all the small scale. And then you see, the wave coming over there. one two three four five six seven see the waves and at eight seconds it's gone so you see the 
big wave and then the wave gets smaller. This huge thing was the hand shock. But of course it's not, we need to see and compare with others. Now we check number two. And this is one thing that the app is a little laggy, so it always takes a while until it switches to the next. So now we go. You see the hand shock was a little smaller, but it still almost fills the whole range here, the red. And then you see again, do, 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 five seconds. And then it stops and you have only micro vibrations going. But the first five seconds, you see the waves. In the next one, I will show you later on screenshots of these ones where we zoom in so you see it better. Only for now in as field test. Come on, show me number three. And this is number three. Here you see the vibration, hand shock. It's not fully there, but again, these vibrations over there until five seconds. And this is what I told you. I plug the string and I can feel it five seconds. Now you can see it. And now we try this with another one. This so what we try now is obviously an English longbow out of... This is a tree laminated from Flagella Day. And longbows, as we know, are a bit more prone to have a little hand shock or something going on. So let's see. So, and then we start, we are ready, I am ready, and I see it's here between these two dots, so I draw between these two, and then I'm exactly 10 centimeters, I always draw the bows in the same length. Now let's see if this looks different, not sure if you can see it right now. Uh, we are ready. Take a shot. Ooh. Look, ooh, looks different. Okay, we take another one. Up to here. Hey, yeah, yeah, so. The only thing, it takes a while. For the matter of science, we do that. Shot number two and shot number three. Of course, it can happen something, so I take three shots and then we see if the pattern is the same. Then we can kind of relate to it. So, shot number three, here, show me. Always takes 15 seconds. Stop. So now we can analyze these ones. Now this is now shot number one. The red bar completely here and you see the distance here, but we will scale it then that we know how much is this red movement here. So we see hand shock and then you see the vibration. It comes over and comes over and continues. Here's 12 seconds, 13 seconds. We have a big, small, and it goes big and small again. Number two. If, yes, so. Hand shock wise, it's not even that much. It's a little kick, but then you see here the vibration again going on for nine seconds, and you see it really builds up there. When the limb comes back and starts, and the third one, and here we have it again. Here we have a really big hand shock going on. And the vibration stops around six seconds. So this is what you get here, but you see the waveforms. The thing is when you have somewhere a peak, it scales everything down to this peak. So I wish Mantis will make this for me that I can see this graph here in the whole length. And I see really the difference that we have a uh, measuring uh, running from, from zero, one, two, three, four, five, that we see really how big are the peaks compared between the different bows? But I will talk to Mentis and I hope that they can help us with this one. So I'm aware that the mounting has still an impact, but now we try it with the Solak from Paragon. How easy this one is to mount. It's a Turkish handle. Let's see what it does. I need to tighten you, my friend. 
I mean, I'm not sure if we get it really scientific done, or at least you get an idea of what I'm talking. Let's see, oh, it's sliding. Let's see, this is ah, ah, handle to mount. Turkish, good for the hand, but not good for the clamp. What we get there? So, is it stiff? Yeah. Stiff. So let's see. Let's start a new one. Re restart and restart. And we're here exactly at this one, so I draw down there and let go. Boom. Ay, ay, ay. And of course, the whole construction is shaking, but at least it shakes for all bows the same way. Then you see what's going on here. There's almost no hand shock going on, but a vibration for a few seconds. Of course, we don't know yet the, the, the size of the vibration, but we get there. I'll explain this later. Yeah, when you see them shaking here, then you know what's going on. Yep, see, almost no hand shock and the vibration problem, I mean, it stops. Interesting, for sure interesting, I'm not sure if it's completely scientific now. So this is number three. See, you have the hand shock, it's very minimal inside there, but I will show you then later these circles around it and you have an idea of scale. This is what we would need here to an area, one, two, three, four seconds, and then it's gone. And shot number three, shot number two. So in Mantis, if you watch this, it takes too long. Shot number two, again, one, two, three, four, not even five seconds, gone. Still, we don't know yet how big this vibration is because it simply scales it up to this full amount it can show here. So this vibration can be way less than from the English longbow, but we simply don't see it yet. But I, I think maybe you get an idea here. We need to compare this then later with screenshots and everything. Back home, not here in the hot sun. It's already way too hot. And here you see there was a little more going on. Two, three, four, five seconds, six seconds. Then it's gone. In the other direction, we have almost no movement and Henjo was very minimal again. Now I show you the screenshots and you see all these motions and vibrations going on of these different bows I tested so far. Uh, and I keep you updated when I have something new for you. Conclusion for now, I think we are on a good way. I need to test more bows, but for now to show you that what I have in mind and how it works, I asked Chris, one of my students, if he can build me one with another motion detector and then we might need an app or a readout measurement that we have really the graph and maybe Mantis is willing and capable of changing showing the graph how I need it. I will talk to them and then we go from there. But for now, this is what I get. That's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching and I catch you in the next one.